All right, Chuck's Chat YouTube. Super wild card weekend. Uh, bad week 18, our worst week this year. I, I think it's the only, I think it's the only week we had an offer, which is good. Um, yeah, I mean, if that's in that week, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I lost on the Panthers and Ravens. You lost on the Dolphins and the over in Arizona, Seattle, which if Seattle doesn't go for two, maybe it's a different been story. Could have been an over. I somehow, there's been like, it happens like once a year where a team fumbles through the end zone. I somehow lost <laughs> that's back to back weeks on a wide receiver fumbling at the one yard line. The Panthers, yeah. I will contend the Panthers were the right side of that game. They just, every opportunity they had to fuck it up, which when you're betting on a two win team that you, you can't, happen. can't bet them and be like, wow, I can't believe they fucked up this many situations, <laughs> but Called back touchdown on an illegal formation, fumbling at the one yard line through the end zone, missing a field goal, and that's how you blow plus four yeah. and a half and lose nine nine nothing. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a crazy score. <laughs> but is what it is. We're on to Super Wild Card Weekend. Um, the I I don't have anything pressing as far as takeaways from last week i think we kind of know what these teams are at this point uh yeah, anything, anything any any thoughts from you no no all right then we'll we'll get right down to it um we'll start so what we're gonna do differently this week versus other weeks is we're gonna go through every game talk about it a little bit um where we might lean something we're looking at a uh, matchup we may like and um if we have a bet we'll talk about it explain why uh, but we will talk about every game, and we'll do that every week uh, throughout these playoffs. There's 13 games left. You'll get 13 little breakdowns um, through the Super Bowl when we crown the Super Bowl 58 champion. Um, so first game up, we'll go chronologically Saturday afternoon, the 4:30 game, the classic Texans spot, and they're hosting the Cleveland Browns. Houston is plus two, total 44 and a half. We both have plays on this game on the side and the total. We'll start with the side here, Jake. Awesome. So, yeah, I am on the Texans plus two at home here. So, the Browns defense, we all know, they would be considered a top unit in the league. But when they hit the road, they just totally disappear. Allow 3.7 yards per play at home, 5.5 on the road. And it's totally led to a big skew in their scoring. And in the win column, on a, five, a negative 5.3 point differential on the road compared to plus 8.4 at home. So a swing like that is very dramatic and obviously a concern. But my biggest concern, I'm a little worried about Joe Flacco. He's put up big numbers, set 300 plus yards in four straight games. But the turnovers are very concerning. He's thrown eight interceptions, fumbled four times in five games as a starter this year. So I think there's a huge risk of flipping the field. And it seems like they're winning too many games despite either losing or tying the turnover battle, which we've discussed in the past, is something that ends very often and can just kick you right in the ass and obviously in this spot totally end your season. So it's something that I think we should definitely be concerned about if you're on the side of the Browns. But as for the Texans, they have all the momentum in the world here. Essentially picked up two – last week was essentially a playoff win a win and get in situation on the road to get to division rival. They beat the Titans, another division rival the week before that. I think CJ Stroud, he's obviously a rookie young guy who's never been in this spot, but to me, he's the real deal. Averaging 317 pass yards per game since week nine, when you take out that one game against the jets that he got injured in and he showed up last week in a must win scenario, completed 77% of his passes, 264 yards, two touchdowns. Only problem or concern I have with Houston is they're loaded with injuries. They have 27 guys in the injury report, which includes players on IR. And some notable names are Will Anderson, Noah Brown, and Robert Woods. So both sides of the ball are affected here. But the Browns played in Houston on Christmas Eve. They were a three-and-a-half-point favorite. And in that game, Case Keenum was a starting quarterback. So right now the line is at two with C.J. Stroud coming in. So – Books are saying it's only a one to one and a half point difference with Stroud in as quarterback. My model has it a three and a half point swing. So I still think there's tons of value here on the Texans. So it is kind of tough backing the rookie quarterback in this spot, but I think CJ Stroud isn't your typical rookie. I think he can get ahead of the old man and Joe Flacco here, potentially even win this game, but definitely see a close contest here. 
Yeah, should be a great start uh, to Wild Card Weekend. I wasn't sure what to do with a side because I definitely see your perspective, and I definitely also see wanting to back uh, Joe Flacco. Like, if if you look at, like, I get what you're saying, and I can totally see why backing the Texans makes sense. I also see the um, like Texans largely. We're probably a year too early because of how good CJ Stroud is. Like the roster yeah. just isn't the same as the Browns. Like the Browns are the Browns come in the season. We're like, okay, we're a playoff team. Yeah. And we need a guy to take us to the Super Bowl. It turns out that Joe Flacco is like kind of <laughs> subbed in for Deshaun Watson, but the Texans have the better quarterback in this game. And he's, you, like you said, he's not a typical rookie, which leads me to, um, the over in this game, uh, over 44 and a half is the number out there now. And um, you would touch on it already. Browns on the road, their defense is much worse averaging, thir- giving up 30 points per game. Um, what we've seen with the Browns, and I think you touched on this in when you took the Browns Jets over in your newsletter a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. The Browns, um, ever since getting Flacco, they throw it way more now. Yeah, and I think that the path for the Browns is to throw the ball. If you look at the Texans' defense this year, they're 19th in dropback success rate versus being first in rushing success rate. And you know, there's a Browns line that they're on their fourth and fifth tackles this season. So the um, and also no Nick Chubb. Yeah. which has been the case all year. So running the ball is probably not the best path, but as they have shown since getting Joe Flacco, they're more than willing to throw the ball, push the ball downfield, be a ground defense. And um, on the other side, like the Texans, they, you know, their best offense is just letting CJ Stroud do what CJ Stroud does like they're yeah they're run. they tried to fire up the running game last week it wasn't their best path to success against the Colts once you know just letting CJ Stroud be CJ Stroud and make the big throws which he made all game um that was their best offense so when you get two teams I think in in an indoor nice indoor track environment and there's going to be way more passing, I think, is the game going to be the game plan for both teams. Less time coming off the clock and more aggressive hunting explosives. I think this has all the recipes for an over. And, you know, it's it's good that we've seen these teams play already because the Browns know exactly what to do already to attack this Texans defense. They already did it once. We'll see how, yeah. you know, D'Amico Ryan's is a good defensive coach. We'll see how he adjusts. But I think the Browns can have – the, I don't think the Texans are talented enough in the secondary to limit, you know, what the Browns have already found success doing. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, probably a – I could see, like, you know, a 24-21. I, I think this thing gets over. Uh, I know that's a close, close call over. on a 24-21, <laughs> but I, 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 I don't know if there's going to be a ton of stops um, on, on either side, really. I think this is a – you know, up and down game here. Yeah, I think I think it's a definitely uh, whoever's got the ball last kind of game. I think they just trade punches the whole time. Second game on Saturday, the Miami Dolphins going to Kansas City. Kansas City Chiefs up to minus four and a half total, forty three and a half. Um, start with you on this one here. Yeah, so second bet of the weekend. I got the under here. At 43 and a half. And the Dolphins are kind of similar to the Browns in terms of their road struggles. They're seven and two at home this year, four and four on the road, and outscoring opponents by more than two touchdowns at home, but on the road, losing by 3.3 points per game. And not only do they have to go on the road, but it's just brutal conditions that they have to be in. Temperatures are going to be as low as negative six on Saturday. High is supposed to be seven degrees. Wind gusts are expected to reach 30 miles per hour. So I think. The Chiefs, who are a team that look like they're figuring things out again, got a little bit of rest last week with their starters, most of their starters being out, and they got the home field advantage and the weather here. I just don't see 
either team necessarily scoring too many points here, but I think every spot favors the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs would probably cover the spread here. I think they could win by a touchdown, but I think this is a very grinded out football game that Miami just probably isn't really ready for and experienced with like Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs are. So I would lean Chiefs on the spread at minus four and a half, but I'm definitely rocking with the under. Yeah, I uh, I like the under here too. I, I didn't take it. I'm waiting to see because this is now the – all these games are standalone, so for the most part, my mindset is if you like a dog, wait. And if you like yeah. an under, wait because the public is going to be, especially for Dolphins Chiefs, they – in the NFL more than the other sports, just because of volume of betting, they, you know, will likely be betting the over in this game and pushing it up. So maybe you can get a good number. I don't know how high it's going to, you know, now, now with weather being a factor, factor, you may be on the right side of the move at this point. Like it could yeah. only go down, go down from here. Um, Cause that's going to be a huge talking point. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, in that, um, in that same vein, I took uh, Rashi Rice under 65 and a half yards. And okay. the one thing that um, you didn't touch on that I think is important is Miami. Um, so in in this scenario, I, I think the Chiefs are going to win too. I don't really have an opinion on the four and a half. But um, one, Miami, their best game plan, I think, in this game, they kind of showed it at the end of the – Germany game in the second half is running the ball because you can run on the Chiefs. So that lends itself to an under. And Mike McDaniel, as we know, coached with Kyle Shanahan. And I th- believe I'm don't correct me if I'm wrong. I may be getting this mixed up. I believe he was the run game coordinator under Kyle Shanahan. I think that was his. I honestly role. have no clue. If it's not, then I got that mixed up with something else, but I believe he was. And you even see it with the Dolphins. Like, they have very creative running schemes. Like, yeah. Mike McDa- they they have all the glitz and the glam with Jalen Waddle, Tyreek Hill, Tua throwing it around. But, like, and in his core, like, he's a creative run game coach. Yeah. And I think that's their best recipe here. So that lends itself to an under there. And also, time of possession, which for the Chiefs, two things one if they possess the ball less that's good for rushy rice under 65 and a half yards also if they're up in the game late there's gonna be more running yeah. less throwing and the other thing is i think jalen ramsey this is it's, it's starting to become very easy to defend the chiefs you basically just say let someone not named travis kelsey or rushy rice beat us and we saw in Germany, Rushy Rice had two catches. One was a touchdown, but he had two catches for 19 yards. Jalen Ramsey kind of followed him around that game. I think their plan, and he's a rookie. So yeah. I think the, I think one, I think if you're the Chiefs and you're relying on him to make plays in this, like he, he's not, he's not like when Jamar Chase was a rookie. Like he's not that level of player. Like he's a yeah. nice guy. Like who knows? If he was on, you know, any other random team, like say he was on the Browns, like how much would we really notice him? I don't know. Um, but he's on the Chiefs and he's Patrick Mahomes' number one guy. So it's like, okay, Rishi Rice, everyone knows. Um, but one, you have the insane winds. It's like 14 to 30 miles. An hour. Four, <laughs> I think sustained 14 with gusts up to 30. It's negative five degrees out. How much are they going to be throwing the ball, throwing the ball. in yeah. those conditions? Jalen Ramsey following him around. The idea being that um, Mitt let Kadarius Tony, Justin Watson, right? Justin Watson? Justin That's Watson, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, let those guys beat you. I think that there's a you know a pretty good chance that he goes under that. It, basically, what what I think will be the dagger is if he gets hits an explosive. And he, against the Bengals, the last game that he – played in like he had 125 yards but he got like 80 of it on one play yeah and that's a Bengals defense that's way worse than this Miami defense Miami so I, I think there's um you know I, I feel pretty good about it but this is mostly a weather and game script yep. type play like this isn't my biggest play but it's like all right I'll, I'll take a shot yeah on, I, on him to go under here I totally like that I think 
unders are probably the way to go in this game, if I'm being honest. Yeah. It just seems... Yeah, I've even looked at, like, Mahomes or Tua unders, and this is, again, like, ones that I'm waiting on because those are two of the more popular players. players. Yeah. They'll probably take a lot of over money, so let's see where it's at around yeah. kickoff, but... I think it's just going to be a very sloppy game. For nothing, there's game plans could go out the window, but I think it'll be... Defenses will hold, hold up enough to make mm-hmm. it interesting. Um, on to Sunday, 1 p.m. kick, Buffalo, Pittsburgh. This is another big weather game for those who are not aware. Um, I will read you the forecast in Buffalo for Saturday at 1 p.m. There is a there's a 35 percent chance of snow, and the wind is supposed to be 26 miles an hour with gusts up to 52 and yes. and with the lake effect this, this could just get this could look like the bills patriots game from a couple years ago on monday night football yeah. buffalo bills are minus 10 total is 35 and a half um yeah what do you you know what are you thinking here so i think the bills out of any team in the playoff are the one with like the widest range of outcomes. I think they could, like we saw them go, what rip off five straight wins, mm-hmm. six straight wins, then the regular season after they were pretty much out on the outside looking in the playoffs. I think they were the 12 seed at one point or 11 seed, so they weren't looking good. And now they're all the way back, win the division. People are kind of back on the Bills wagon here, and I think they could totally win the Super Bowl. But I think they could just as easily maybe even lose this game. I think it all lies on the shoulders of Josh Allen, like pretty much every Bills game. But you're either going to get the good version or you're going to get the really shitty one that turns the ball over four times and just gives the Steelers those chances to win. Like we kind of saw, when was it, week two or week three, when the Steelers beat the Browns. They didn't even – they got. I don't even think they got to the red zone on offense. Yep. They crossed the 50-yard line once, and they scored, what, 26 points because the defense was just an absolute workhorse. So if they if Bills get into that kind of spot, they'll definitely be in trouble. That's why if I'm not betting this game probably. I mm-hmm. think there's a lot of factors that – I don't think the number is that friendly, but I do kind of lean Steelers plus 10 here. I like what Rudolph has done, and as I said, with Josh Allen and his turnover vulnerabilities can certainly make things interesting. But I'll probably set this one out, I think, Steelers would probably be the way I would go, though. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Um, if if I bet this game, it'll probably be the under. And I, for something like this, which the total's just gotten just beaten Thanks. down, it was probably like forty two, yeah. and it's come down to thirty five and a half. The obvious, you know, being the weather, I just want to see what it is like. 15 minutes before kickoff because if it is that then i'll just take the under 35 and a half and just yeah. say this like how is anyone gonna <laughs> throw in this game like you have to run yeah so take my chances with that but yeah this the i completely agree like the bills their variance with buffalo yeah. is so wide like it wouldn't shock me if we're about to kick off the dallas game and the bills are like up three down three going into you know, final two minutes of the That's, game. And, yeah. um, and this is another one where you have to, I think if you're, and I'll talk about this with Dallas, but the, the most teased games and most parlayed games are going to be Bill's money line, Bill's spread. And then Probably. Dallas also are going to be, so be careful. Like if you're betting, if you're teasing that or, you know, doing a money line parlay, like just kind of tread, carefully it's never that easy yeah (laughs) it's just never like if you're teasing the bills from 10 to 4 it's just not that easy that they're just going to win by a touchdown in this game yeah it's it this is the perfect we've talked about all the time this is the perfect mike tomlin (laughs) this is the perfect mike tomlin like no one believes in us getting 10 points in a playoff game yeah yeah um backup qb third yeah yeah, i guess (laughs) right yeah yeah so um so yeah, yeah, and and who who are the Bills? Like obviously the Bills are good, and you know they're not what they were last year. But like it's still who are they to be laying ten points in a playoff game? Yeah, it's 
they could be very easily out of the playoffs next week. I could totally see it. Mm -hmm. It's strange to say because of what they've done recently, at least, but I I could see it happen somehow. We even saw last year in their first game against the Dolphins, Dolphins. and Skylar Thompson. With a back <laughs> they won but by, what, they, three maybe? Yeah, it was, uh, I think it was 34-31 was the yeah. final. And they that were like that sounds familiar. 10, 11, 12-point favorites, whatever they closed at. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it was – they they somehow make it make it close. I don't know. They, they don't play know. down to the competition a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's it, yeah. Um, Next game, Green Bay. Getting seven at Dallas total is 50 and a half. Um, I actually have one. I'll play on this one. I took the Packers plus seven and a half. I still like it at seven. Um, so basically, I think that what one, I think what's important, and you always have to consider like this is one of the most teased and parlayed games. Like the books yeah. want the book uh, in a perfect world, the books get the Packers to win outright. So obviously, like I'm going to consider that in betting a team because they're just they're not in business to lose money like let's just call it what it is uh the the other thing on like from an on-field perspective i think that the packers have some favorable matchups and we're really seeing like the maturation of jordan love i think we talked about it on this show like early in the year he just wasn't playing well and they were hunting deep plays a lot he really hadn't come into his own yet and I think there were some question marks I think after the the right they played the Raiders on Monday night and they lost I think we came on the show and we're like yeah is Jordan Love even the guy yeah. or at least I know I, I, I said it and I think we were both on the same page there yeah obviously you know he is a good quarterback and this is you know it was just a over, you know we were just being reactionary to a primetime game which everyone does <laughs> Um, but he finished the year top 10 in EPA plus completion percentage over expectation and fifth in EPA per play Dallas, they get a lot. Of, and, you know, we've talked about their ultimate front runners, their defense thrives on turnovers. And when they get turnovers and they get leads, that's when they're at their best. They're top five in EPA per play, but they're 22nd and success rate defensively and since week eight our 30th and rushing success rate. Basically, if you're new here, success rate is a better determiner of down and down success. Uh, EPA has a lot of turnovers factored into it. So a team who gets a lot of turnovers, which largely luck based their EPA will be higher. You really want to trust success rates in my opinion, to get the best gauge for a defense. So, you know, one of the worst rushing defenses we saw against Detroit. Detroit did whatever they wanted on the ground in that game, and it really neutralized. Um, what Dallas does best. Um, so, you, you really need to avoid Dallas getting out to a big lead early in this game, because the Packers... <laughs> Sorry, I've been battling okay. a, uh, a little cold here, but Packers are eighth in rushing success rate. So if they can fire up the ground game, I think they're going to have a lot of success. Um, they're also 28th, Green Bay's 28th in first half pace, so a slow game in the first half. And this is by design. They're going to be slow, methodical. We yeah. saw it against the Bears. They had like six possessions in that game. <laughs> yeah. So despite scoring 17 points, they had I think they had a turnover. They had the end of first half snafu that they did where they – didn't get out of bounds, but like they only had 17 points, but they had seven yards per play. Like the offense was effective. The yeah. scoreboard was just deceiving because how little possessions they were, but that's by design. That's what green Bay wants to do. So slow pace and run the ball. Jordan love just has to make good decisions. Um, you can have success on Dallas. And we've seen when Dallas plays good teams, like there's a lot of, you know, we've talked about it a lot when they're at home, how good they are. But a lot of the success that we've seen of them beating teams down is like Washington, New York Giants. Yeah. These current Eagles. Like, these aren't teams that I'm like, oh, they're like the Patriots, the Jets. Like, if you just look at the teams that they play at home this year, like, they're, you know, they're just not good teams. Good like, of you know, of course they're beating them down. Um, the concerns here for me, Green Bay is 26th 
in success rate defensively this season. So if Dallas can get out to that early lead, which they can definitely score on Green Bay, yeah, and you're playing from behind, things could get out of hand. I I think the Packers have just been trending trending too well and Dallas maybe not trending well enough to see that happening. Yeah. Um and also the Packers youngest team in the league. Youngest mm-hmm. team in the league, road playoff game. That's um definitely something that has to be considered. But yeah, give me the Packers. Anything touchdown or better. Um they're a live dog to me. That I think they're better than they're getting credit for. Yeah, I totally agree. I think Jordan Love turning that corner of probably about six weeks ago, maybe halfway through the season, was huge. I think earlier in the year, his completion percentage was like below 60% for a long portion of it. And then he ended the year at 64%. And I, he had 36 total touchdowns this year, which was like fourth amongst quarterbacks, which is crazy. I didn't think he had nearly that many. So I think he's definitely capable. But as you said, the youth – is definitely a concern here for everybody. When you when your quarterback's young, I don't think he's, or at least in his first year as a starter, I don't think he's on the same level as a guy like C.J. Stroud, even though Stroud has that comfortability of playing at home that Jordan Love does not have in this game. So I think that could come back to bite him. But seven and a half is a friendly number here. I think getting it outside of that touchdown is a perfect spot. So I would definitely, I probably won't take it, but I would, be on the side of the Packers too in this one. Probably the game that I'm looking forward to most. The LA Rams going to Detroit. Stafford returns. Golf playing McVay. Detroit is minus three. The total is 51 and a half. Um, what do you think for this one? So I think the Rams they kind of give me a similar vibe as the Texans in terms of I think they can be a team that makes some noise. Then a team that many probably aren't expecting to get very far, but I totally see them as a dark horse, especially with the storyline of this game. Like you said, Stafford coming back home or coming back to Detroit the same year that the Lions, first time the Lions win the division in 30 years. So I think it's just going to be an awesome match based on that alone. But the Lions secondary is so vulnerable and the Rams are definitely going to throw the ball. Stafford's been red hot. This offense is good with Puka and Nakua, Cooper Cup. They got options. Kyron Williams is tremendous in the run game, too. So there's weapons everywhere. Obviously, the Lions are a great home team, especially on offense, too. So I totally see this getting to a shootout. I kind of like the over here. It's pretty high from when I remember. Mm-hmm. sitting low 50s, I believe, 51-ish. But if I had to take a play here, I'd probably go over. I could also – might even sprinkle Rams money line here. I think it's – unfortunate draw for the Lions after all they've done. But Stafford, you get that little motivation factor of going back to where you spent most of your career. And I just think the Rams, kind of how we said with the Packers, are just trending up Mm -hmm. as Detroit's kind of looked vulnerable the second half of the season. So I could totally see the Rams winning this one. Yeah, this is a, this is a tough one. Um, Cause they're, they're, both teams, the, the Rams have trended up, and Detroit, and this is like a broken record if someone's watched the show for like the past eight weeks of me saying <laughs> yeah. like Detroit's overrated. Like, I do think they're not as good as they are perceived to be, especially defensively, and the Rams might be the first team since the Bears to really take advantage of that. Um, and like the Vikings did, but they turned over four times. That's, again, like turnover luck eventually turns against you. Yeah. Um, if Stafford takes care of the ball, like they can probably name the score in this one, but Detroit like can say the same thing. Like the, I think the Rams largely overachieved this season. Like no one expected them to be this good. They don't have the Jimmies and Joes that the Lions do. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, this just feels like it. It feels like an instant classic waiting to happen. I don't know what <laughs> I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. The the last thing I'll kind of leave with this is that the Rams. Like they're one and six against playoff teams this year. Yeah. So like they took care of business against teams they're supposed to. Like I can't, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I can't, can't say anything them, about that. But... Um but it's uh like the, the the lines are probably the more talented team. It's just oh, sure. do you 
when it comes to the matchups, like it's hard for me to see on either side, like where's the big edge yeah right now so it's almost default just take the points and be like all right hopefully they <laughs> they, they win this game yeah um, so yeah no I, I don't have much more to add uh i mean yeah. the spread for this game is what three points it's mm-hmm. basically being what maybe the Rams would be like a half point favorite at home it's essentially almost like as even as it gets mm-hmm. uh, yeah and it was that open i think four was at three and a half for a bit, mm-hmm. and now it's all the way down to three. There's definitely a lot of people hitting the Rams here. Yeah. For sure. Probably definitely the public side, which is strange because yeah. I feel like the Lions are normally the public side in most of their games. But yeah. Yeah, it is, uh, it is interesting. Um, last game, Monday Night Football. <laughs> Our Philadelphia Eagles, three-point favorites at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Total is 43 and a half, Jake. Uh, this – this game is worse. Oh, this is a Thursday night football game that they're playing in the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. I really don't know here. It's like the Eagles have been so bad. And like the Buccaneers obviously aren't that good. We saw last week against the Panthers what happened there. They barely squeaked by. Probably shouldn't have. And I just think there's – too much going wrong. With the, there has to be something going on behind the scenes that we have no clue about. And I think it's very hard to – you enter the playoffs on that kind of a losing skid. You're then – you blow the division that you're clearly the front runner to win. You have to go on the road in a playoff game and try to fix it. I think that's just a very tough thing to do. There are only three-point favorites here, so it's kind of tempting to just – it, like you kind of said, just take the points, hope they win the game kind of thing. But I would definitely be leaning towards the Buccaneers here, at least on the spread. I don't really have an opinion after that. I'm very worried about the Eagles. Very nervous on that side. I just don't know if they have it in them. Jalen Hurts, whatever finger injury, I doubt it's going to affect them any more than he's just been playing bad football anyway. I doubt the finger is going to make anything worse. But I just have a very hard time seeing the Eagles – correcting it and blowing out the Buccaneers here, like the Eagles that we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is – if I play it, it'll probably be Eagles or nothing only because I don't think the Bucs are very good. This is not to say that the Eagles haven't lost five of six, but, (laughs) like, if you just look at – like, to put the rosters next to each other, like the Eagles have a better roster. If they're both playing their best game, Eagles are a better team. It's – if – do the Eagles even have their best game in them anymore is the question. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, if I do play it, it's going to be the Eagles. Um, personally, I want them to lose and fire everyone, but, <laughs> <laughs> but this, this show isn't about what I personally think. This show is about, you know, what we're we can, about. So. We can add to the coaching care. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. We can add to the coaching care. We have Patricia already, so we can bring in Belichick and Belichick. McDaniels. <laughs> and, Bring get the New England band back together and win win six Super Bowls. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I don't have much on the Eagles except if they. I mean, if it, I feel like the last two months are probably more indicative of what this team is right now, which is why mm-hmm. I have trouble laying the three. But you know, when you look back last year, it, there's so many similarities last year, as far as like how the season ended last week. You have Dallas going to. Washington and losing like 27 to seven. And then they just pants the box on national television, winning by like 20 or whatever. Yeah. So like the, like the Eagles go to New York, lose, but I don't even know what the final score was. I, I don't remember, but they yeah, got blown out. Stopped watching that one. Yeah. They got blown out. Like, will they just come into this one and just assert themselves and blow out a team that's just not very good that won the South. Yeah. I could see either them losing or blowing this team, so that it doesn't help. But yeah, <laughs> it's it's a t- definitely a tough one to read. Mm-hmm. Like I don't necessarily see the Buccaneers coming and winning by twenty. I don't no. think that'll happen. I think if the Bucks win, it's like a last second field goal kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, it's the Eagles. I just don't. I don't know what to say. They they look bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a tough spot to put the train back on the tracks. I feel like. Yeah, and the the other interesting thing too, we have um, the way that the lineup is set. 
it's all three AFC games are first, and then all three NFC games are second. So I didn't even notice could, that. We could have some uh, – on Sunday, we could have some – AFC lines coming out early for yeah. if if the uh, how are the seeds set up? Oh, I guess we'll basically w- be waiting if Pittsburgh wins anyway. I guess so. We would be waiting till like four on Sunday anyway. So I guess not that early because Pittsburgh Buffalo is the third yeah. one. But all right, um, yeah. So uh, so we broke down every game five. Our five plays this week are the Jake has the under 43 and a half in Kansas City, Miami, and Houston getting two at home. I am on the over 44 and a half in Cleveland, Houston. Rashi Rice under 65 and a half receiving yards, and the Packers plus seven. Um, let's not go 0 and 5 is now the. We got to go 5 and up. We got we got to go five and zero make up for last week. Um, we'll be back next week. Divisional round, best weekend of the NFL season. Yep. Um, yeah, let's let's sweep the board. By the way, I think we I don't think we got I think we got one in the round robin again. And the round robin's done now. By the way, for yeah, one and four after an hour and five. So tough end of the season for the round robin. Yeah, dude, that was probably the worst. Show. I hope no one watched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. I wasn't checking any comments. I didn't want any. I didn't want anyone to shit on me. So we should delete it, <laughs> erase it from the internet. Yeah. Um, I forgot to say this at the beginning, but like, share, subscribe, subscribe to Jake's newsletter in the the description. Um, NFL, NBA, college football, college basketball, MLB, NHL. Did I miss anything? No. Okay. <laughs> and then follow me on Action Network. You can see all my bets that I place in real time. I promise college basketball will be better. I'm just getting my feet wet. Um, but we did have Iowa State and Mississippi State. So. Yeah. I liked both of those yesterday, too. Um, yeah. Or Mississippi uh, State was yesterday. Iowa State was whatever, two days ago. Yeah, two days ago. Um, big day Saturday. We're starting yep. to get these big cards. So, all right, let's sweep the board. We'll see you guys next week.